This has been a really successful collaboration because it, it does link that horticultural expertise that the gardens have that we don't have here necessarily. It links the science so that we know there's um, a really good genetic background gone into the, the establishment of the seed production areas and it's linked the Greening Australia component which is actually getting that seed back out into the environment and creating new um, vegetation. We're seated here in the Centre for Australian National Biodiversity Research at CSIRO at Black Mountain in Canberra and I'm a research scientist with CSIRO. I'm actually a conservation and restoration geneticist, so we try to use genetic tools to look at improving how we conserve and manage and restore um, plant biodiversity. Okay, so the Caring for Country project um, began because there was a concern that a lot of the grassland species that we at CSIRO had been looking at actually had um, strange chromosome numbers. So they, their genetic diversity was, was different in one spot to what it was in another spot. And we were concerned that if we brought all these um, populations together, then um, we'd mix these, these genes up and we might create a bad outcome. So the component that we're doing at CSIRO is basically looking at um, chromosome numbers in the species that have gone into seed production at the um, Botanic Gardens and at the Greening Australia um, Nursery. The reason we want to look at the chromosome numbers is because we're concerned that if we bring different chromosome numbers together into a single site, like, such as in a nursery, then we'd create um, plants that are sterile. And the analogy is if you mix a donkey and a horse, you get a sterile mule. So it would be the same for bringing these populations in to a single site and letting them reproduce. Land's been um, instrumental in um, getting the plants growing. Then we sample those plants, so we take leaves of those plants. Then we basically cut them up quite finely in some solutions so that their cells break open and all those chromosomes come out. Then we suck up that liquid and we mix it with some other um, chemicals that basically help it um, stabilise and then we also put in some they're like pigments so that the machinery can actually see the chromosomes. Then she puts them on the machine and we just wait for a peak that you will see come up and that gives us an indication of the size of the genome that we've just measured. This is the last sample at the COVID. Oh excellent we've done all of I'm in this group for seven years I think already. I really enjoyed work here in the environment is very good and the colleagues are very friendly and give me a great help and my boss is very good as well. Yeah. Were you pleased with the results that were coming up? I'm very happy with the result. So chromosomes are the fundamental building blocks of life basically. They're the machinery that guides a cell to produce different types of products such as enzymes or proteins and it's basically they drive the architecture of what organisms look like and how they function. Is that the same sample, the next sample? This is a new sample. So what that is doing is it's measuring the size of two genomes actually. It's measuring what we call a standard and that's a, a Vigna sample and it's comparing that to our plant sample and that gives us an indication of the difference between the two genomes. It's very relevant, um, particularly for grassland species, which is what we've, we've concentrated on because um, grasslands are endangered and so they're um, protected by um, federal and state legislation. And one of the key things we need to do is actually restore them. But we want to do that in a really sustainable way. So we don't want to be bringing together populations of um, grassland plants that we shouldn't be bringing together. Because that's going to fundamentally change um, how they interact and might produce these sterile plants. Well, one of the benefits is we'll know that within this region that we don't have an issue with polyploidy, so that's this chromosomal variation that we might have an issue with, but we didn't know when we started the project. Um, that allows us to expand the region that we can collect from, so that we're not going to the same spots over and over and over again to collect the seed, because it's not just us that want the seed, there's a whole range of organisms that actually rely on that seed for food or for part of their life cycle as well. So we need to leave a certain amount of seed there for them, and we can take a certain amount of seed as well. So that'll stop us keep going back to the same sites over and over again. The seed production area allows us to 
quality control the seed that we're producing as well. So we know that the best quality seed is now going back out into the environment. We're a very close-knit um, community in terms of doing research and making that research um, mean something on the ground, so making it practical. And that's where Greening Australia are the practical side of it. The Bot Gardens provides the horticultural side of it and we provide some of the scientific information required to sort of link those three aspects together. Oh, this is exciting stuff. This is really exciting. Um, understanding the genetics and how you can use genetics to improve um, biodiversity is a real passion for me. I absolutely adore coming to work and being able to um, improve biodiversity across Australia in some small way. And if that's informing farmers how to you know, manage a bit of vegetation a bit better or informing someone like Greening Australia how to collect their seed a bit better, that's of benefit to everybody, hopefully.